Hey guys, LV here. As you can see from the title, today we are going to review another album today. Today we are going to be reviewing Shina Ringo's third album, Karuki Samen Kuri no Hana. As always in my videos, this album was requested and it was requested by the YouTube user Peter Simon. So thank you very much for requesting this album and I do hope the opinions I'm about to give off this album, I do hope they'll manage to stir your interest a bit. <laughs> because of its complexity, the title for this album has been dramatized in so many different ways. I'll admit the wording of it was quite difficult to translate. Rengo used obsolete kanji to sound out the foreign words, so it was rather hard for me to like find the exact meaning. Of course I didn't have I didn't do this all by myself. I had help by um some of my fellow YouTubers and some of my Japanese friends had helped me out a lot through this. So thank you guys for that. I'm gonna be saying a lot of Japanese terms within this, so if I get anything wrong I would do wanna apologize. Don't mean any disrespect there. this <laughs> Based off some research, I do know that this is Ringo-chan's most perfected album. She wrote the lyrics within this piece in ancient Japanese style. Orthographic symmetry were displayed amongst these title tracks, and over 30 types of instruments were played within this album as well. The varied sound she weaved within these melodies created this aroma that solidifies its overall sound. Not only are the instrumentals ever-changing, but the genre here takes different musical ranges from traditional sounding ballads to these crazy dance tunes that just emphasize the album's lingering theme of noise. One compliment I can give this album is that it's quite consistent. Her uses regarding these experimental structures cackles with the utmost energy that definitely pins the unique elements tremendously well together. I like how this song starts with this flush of electronic orchestra here, since it introduces this new sound, and it keeps prolonging this pattern before it heads into this soft but steady sound here. I really love these distinctive vocals that Ringo-chan is using, because throughout this entire track, she uses a different variety of vocal sounds. For instance, throughout the verses here, she's using this relaxing vocal performance before the song goes more gruffer as the instrumentals begin to intensify. And as it heads into this chorus here, the song begins to take a more hypnotic effect based on the heavy electronic distortion that she uses on her voice. All of which I found extremely cool since it complements the overall arrangement that's bouncing off her voice. And I definitely appreciate the song's overuse of Japanese instruments since it fully strengthens its lyrical content, which uses numerous references toward death. Overall, this song truly made an interesting start for this album since it uses these thought-provoking traits that definitely conceives the structure into a well-balanced song. The structure of this song totally tricked me within the beginning. For one, it starts off with this steady mellow beat here, alongside these strange noises that we hear in the background. For some reason, they give me this rather ominous edge. And I think she meant to do it that way because it definitely showcases another technique of sound to this. I noticed within this song, her vocals tend to take more of a raspy approach. For some reason, I think it suits better. It gives off a rather mysterious edge to it because I don't know why she's making her vocals sound this way. Just as I think it's gonna keep like this, it starts to build with more speed until it reaches to this bouncy chorus right here. And I must say that I rather like the chorus because it totally strengthens my admiration for incorporating these ominous sounds within this piece. Yet as we can hear, I notice that it doesn't maintain that pattern for very long. It again lattens itself with these slow sections here that again emphasize its overuse of sound before it once again explodes into this bouncing dance tune once more. The lyrics too take an interesting turn since the structure of them seems to talk about the opposite of things such as hello and goodbye, day and night, love and hate, 
along with this tinge of an oxymoron usage. And I would once again like to thank the YouTube user Peter Simon for helping me with this song. I had a bit of a trouble with the lyrics and he helped me translate a bit of the pieces so I can make my review of the song. So once again I would like to thank you for that because you've given me another perspective regarding the lyrics. Overall I enjoyed myself tremendously when listening to this track. It's crazy and fun and that's what definitely helps me adore this intriguing beat to it. I'll admit listening to this was rather interesting. It starts off with this more traditional rock sound that for some reason I thought suited it quite well. But as you guys can hear right here, the sound suddenly starts to inflare into this more jazz-like tune that for some reason I thought it escalated quite well with regarding the height of this song. I'm not sure if you guys can hear here, but it seems that within this piece, it seems the violin's the centerpiece of this song, alongside this complimenting guitar we hear as well. Like the previous tracks before it, I like the way the strings within this track go from calm to flat out bizarre in a second. I'll admit I wasn't feeling this track too much within the beginning, yet the more I kept listening to it, the more and more I fell in love with the instrumentals, since they really incorporate these uncommon sounds that's very kooky, yet very fun. Interestingly enough, the lyrics within this tune mention the word ishki, while ishki itself doesn't have the word mezai in it at all. Instead, she sings the word in its katakana form. To be honest, I think this is the only pair of songs that she did this on, yet despite that striking concept, I still think that it was executed quite beautifully since the music itself is well crafted again. The next track is Odaiji Ni. Just when I thought this album couldn't be any more varied. <laughs> We finally reach the album's first actual ballad. Yet always with Rengo-chan, I tend to notice that this ballad takes a different approach than all the other ballads I've heard. Like most ballads, it uses the traditional approach based off this simple piano here. Yet as it uses this passage, the listener intends to notice these odd dialogue sounds that's infiltrating within the background to this. I'll admit hearing that strange dialogue within the background stirred my interest quite a bit because it's something that does demonstrate its overall aroma. Another thing I like about this ballad is as this ballad keeps playing, I tend to notice that we get a chance to hear this electronic guitar later on within the song. And I don't know, for some reason, I really like that because it really added to the song's oral effect. And I was like, ooh, because I was really entranced after I heard that. And while the ballad itself does possess worthy qualities, I will say that this isn't my most favorite off this entire album. Yet, I found it to be a solid tune since it works such wonders with the Ringo style. The next track is Yatsuke Shimoto for such a pessimistic title. This probably has to be the most happiest song on this album in terms of sound. As you guys can hear right here, it begins with these flashes of different sounds from the sounds of newscasting. It sounds as though she's flipping the channel. That's what this, it gives me the image of. She's like doing many different things throughout this, so she's flipping the channel. Then all of a sudden, I'm not sure if you guys can hear, but she certainly starts to blend stuff, and then I, I think I hear a vacuum at one point. Then all of a sudden, as you guys can hear, it suddenly bursts into this cutesy sound which in my opinion was completely unexpected to me. Another thing I did like about this tune was the blaring brass that was incorporated throughout it, since the approach of it really highlights the other cuteness of this song. The instrumentals themselves also seem to use this happier approach in terms of the grandiose melodies here that's used to incorporate this. Despite this tune being happier in overall sound, I wouldn't say the lyrics to this are exactly happy. From what I've interpreted of these lyrics, they seem to reflect the general feeling of apathy and the soullessness that Tokyo seems to incorporate. Not that I think that about Tokyo, of course. I'm just going by the lyrics of the song. But even still, I'm still curious why she wanted to talk about a topic like this. Even though I wouldn't call, say I'm the Tokyo expert, I wonder why she would talk about the soullessness of a city and reference it to her hometown because she does reference it within this song numerous times and it makes the aroma on this song all the more not sinister but a bit unsettling 
if I had to be honest. Although I found the lyrics to this rather unsettling, I will admit I did find this tune to be a rather interesting mix. Another thing I didn't like about it was I wasn't really satisfied with the lack of pronouns used here. But then again, besides personal usage, I don't think the Japanese language has pronouns, so it was rather hard for me to interpret who was saying what within this song. However, I didn't dwell on that factor too long because I usually assume that everything is usually being told from a first person perspective, since that's usually the case with most songs. Overall, in terms of my own opinion regarding this song, I find Rengo Shang to be enjoyable. It seems to demonstrate these fun sounds that won't be forgotten anytime soon, which was another factor I really enjoyed because it gives another interesting side to Ringo, and I did like it. It seems we've reached another interesting song in terms of the overall quality of sound. I don't know about you guys, but within this tune, I must say that I really adored this ominous opening that she used here because it once again showed a different side of music, which I believe played into the theme of noise that she seemed to be using here, as her vocals adds this ominous sound to it that leaves me rather baffled, but in a good way, of course. And I really adore how she maintains this pattern throughout this mix here, until it finally reaches into this lone orchestra that really preserves the epicness of the song's creation. And I found with this orchestral break right here, it once again showed another quality of noise on this album. And alongside these distinctive arrangements, we also get to hear these noises that almost sound as though they're footsteps. At first, I did wonder why she did that, yet I realized it made sense based off the song's lyrics. The lyrics themselves seem to dive onto this topic of how all living things have possession of one life. Although I was a bit confused with some of the arrangement here, like I said before, the lyrics go quite well with these distorting strings alongside this Dao sounding guitar since it visualizes this aspects of one beginning their journey. And I just love the way this song carries itself because these unsettling qualities about it spiral amongst this song that really give the listener a sense of unpredictableness. And I especially love when the melodies here start to pick up and erupts into this huge crescendo that really digs a knife into my soul. Because I remember when I first heard this, I was like, oh my god, yes, because this is really cool right here. And then she keeps doing this and doing this until it eventually it erupts into this epicness. And I was like, yes, because oh my goodness. But either way, I love what she's doing right here because it shows another side to the album's personality while still giving the listener a chance to reflect. The next track is Torikush Kiro. The individual relationship between these songs seem very vital amongst this album. It starts off almost entirely with this a cappella effect, and just as I think it's going to maintain that pattern, it suddenly crashes into this frantic piano and horn chorus that seems to just come out of nowhere. Although I do find this song unpredictable in nature, I will say that I did like the parts where we get to hear these flutes alongside this camera bass as the song progresses. As I said before, the sounds here sound the most experimental and the most unusual for this album. To be honest with you guys, I'm not exactly sure how this track relates to its sister track other than having the exact same kana and kanji structure. The only conclusion I can come up with is that these songs have to carry a significant meaning to Ringo herself because the structure of these songs don't really make much sense regarding the symmetry, so it has to mean something to Ringo. Other than that, the structure regarding these two songs don't really seem to designate too much of an obvious connection to me. Then again, it could be just me who's not catching on. So if there's any Ringo fans out there who possibly knows the possible reason for these unusual connections, could you please be sure to let me know because I really don't know. While this may not be my most favorite tune, it still strongly displays what Ringo-chan is all about, so really good. The next track is Okonomide. Right off the bat, it opens up with this jazzy atmosphere that's somewhat questionable in certain aspects. And when I say that, please know that I'm talking about the instrumentals more than anything else. For instance, I think these noise sounds that you hear, I think they're more like the piano more than anything else. Yet, to be honest, I don't think it is if I had to second guess it. Besides that weird intake of the noise, the rest of the song just incorporates these random electronic sounds that highlight different sections within the piece. And trust me you guys, I do know that she did feature numerous instrumentals within this mix, 
but I cannot for the life of me uncover all of them, so I, there's no point. Despite my ignorance regarding some of these instrumentals, I did notice that the same instrumental she used here, she used the same instruments within Odaiji Ni. For some reason, I believe it makes sense because it perfectly clashes with this grand jazzy conclusion I, that I can't help but love. Like most of the instrumental pieces she used amongst this album, I was really entranced by these bizarre sounds within the beginning. Just as I think it's going to maintain this root right here, it suddenly transforms into this relatively smooth interplay between a guitar and a flute. In my opinion, this has to be the most direct song off this entire album when it comes to the instrumental. Oddly enough, I found the structure within its simplicity quite well to leave off on because they give another side of the album, which again, I was quite eager to see. The next track is Boruta Gaisto. This track somewhat returns the listener to the album's original side when regarding its supernatural theme. And I feel that this carnival sound that this song is incorporating merely strengthens my overall statement regarding that supernatural theme. Like its sister song, The Burodenga, this song seems to head into the topics of the supernatural as well. I also noticed that both songs seem to have titles in katakana with the same number of characters. I also admire the way she uses these strands of music box effects since it conceives this lingering image of getting lost within the carnival at night. Although she tries to create this sweet image of the carnival theme, the carnival isn't somewhere I would want to be alone, especially at night. For some reason, I've always associated the carnival with the supernatural. It's not merely the carnival I'm merely afraid of, it's probably the idea about it. Like, um, maybe darkness for example, because I'll be honest with you guys, um, one of the things I am afraid of, I am afraid of the dark. Well, depends on the darkness we're talking here. If it's like standard darkness, then no. When people do ask me what is, what do I fear, I fear the dark. It's not necessarily the dark. I'm afraid of what's in the dark. And I feel that this song, although it, t it tries to tell me something sweetly, it gives me this sinister feel. And that's what makes this song somewhat scary to listen to because it gives me the feeling of the supernatural that it's here and it's with us at all times and that's what scares me about this song. I will say that despite this creepy atmosphere that lingers around this song, I still found it to be an enjoyable song that created an oddly pleasant experience. Well, maybe within the daytime. <laughs> The next track is Soretsu. We finally reached the final track amongst this album, and I must say this was the song that left a tremendous impression on me. For one, I really adored the uses of this crescendo-like beat alongside these traditional sounding Japanese instruments that I can't entirely name. I cannot stress the amount of excellence I find within her vocal abilities. In my opinion, I think she breathes fire into every word here and that reinforces my love for this song every time. Lyrically, this song seems to dive into the concepts of birth and rebirth while its sister track references the concepts of death. Based on a little research I did, I also found a fun fact regarding each of these tracks. Amongst this album, I tend to notice that each song on this album merges into the song before and after it, which all ends with the explosion of sound at the end of this final track. For some reason, when I discovered that fact, I will admit I wasn't really surprised because it makes sense with Ringo's overall style. Despite the interesting qualities that this song along with the other songs carry, there is one thing about this song that I definitely do like, and that is definitely when it reaches into its more darker part of the song, which we will get to right here. Oh my goodness. I must admit that everything about this distortional piece toward the end was especially noteworthy. Everything about this part right here was perfect. There's not much for me to criticize here since everything about this mere structure she created here was utterly divine and that left me with quite a significant impression. Like I stated before, this album was really interesting within the concept of overall sound. I found myself enjoying these tracks more than the time when I first listened to them. I'll admit the creativity within this album is a lot to take in at first. I won't deny that. It is a bit 
startling at first. Yet believe me when I say that it will grow on you. There's something really fresh about this piece that definitely presents this new sound that's utterly enjoyable to listen to. Once again, I would like to thank the YouTube user Peter Simon for requesting this album. Thank you very much for choosing this album for me because this album, again, showcased another different side of Turingo, and I can see why you would choose this because this album does represent a really drastic change within her style, but I did like that, so very good. <laughs> Throughout this album, Ringo Chan definitely highlighted tremendous factors within this piece that definitely conceive the utter best regarding her musical structure. One thing I liked about this album is I liked how every song on here had a different character that made listening to them quite the experience when regarding the overall content of sound. That was my review on Shina Rengo's third album, Karuki Samen Kuri no Hana. Thank you very much to everyone who's watching this video. Once again, special thanks to the YouTube user Peter Simon for requesting this album. I do hope you found the opinions I had on this album worthy to listen to. And I hope that all the other Ringo fans found the opinions I had on this quite satisfactory too. As always with my videos, the next review is going to be another request. So if anyone has any requests they would like me to make, just leave them in the comments below or inbox me. Doesn't really matter. And I'll get to it in the future. Like always, I'll see you guys next time in the next review I'll do. So until next time, bye.